Hi there, this is Yami Jr. And in this tutorial we will finally continue the uh, game creation tutorial series. Uh, this scene here, which you can see, has been made up of some of the objects we're going to make today. Uh, just some uh, street lamps, we've got some buildings in the background, we've got a pavement or sidewalk if you're American, and we've got the road, which you can just about see there. So, to start off with, delete your default cube, and we're going to start creating a uh, street lamp. So to do that, I've decided to use a bezier curve. Should be simple enough. Uh, minus 90, I think it is, actually. And then rotate it again on the Z90. There we go. I'm going to make this straight. I don't know why it starts off like that. I think I'll do. Lift it up to leave enough space for the base of it. Up there. First of all, I'm going to extend it. Create the curve at the top. And I'm actually going to make this flat to start off with. This will just make it easier for scaling of the um, top and everything. There we go. So that's about right. Ish. I'll we'll scale that up and bring that up. To leave enough room for the base. Yeah. Okay, that works for me. So I'm going to move over to the cube tab here. I'm going to uncheck caps for front and back. And this is going to allow us to add a bevel, which will basically create a tube. So we can see that here. So make it kind of thick. And I'm just going to... At the moment, it's a sort of square tube. We don't really want that. But we do need to remember that this is modeling for games. So what we need to do is use low poly modeling. So, in other words, we've got to be really conscious about the number of faces and vertices in our models. Because, of course, the less faces and the less vertices, the more smooth and the more quickly the game will actually run. So, we could turn the resolution up and, I don't know, I think 3 is nice. Although, you're going to be whizzing past it, so it's not really essential. And again, I'm going to pull this up even more. Yeah, that's better. Right, so now I'm just going to convert this using Alt C to a mesh so that we can start editing it a bit more. Now I'm going to go to wireframe mode here because Blender's, the current build that I'm using of Blender is messing up a bit in terms of uh, vertex detection. So I try to select a vertex and it just doesn't work. It selects something really random. So that's going to be the base. Simple. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I think I'll just extend that and move it down a bit. Create some. Not that far out. Create some loop cuts for the actual bulb bit of it. Like there and there. Scale this down to create an end. Grab all of this. Make sure I haven't got anything else. And I'm going to scale it in Z. Just a bit and scale it on the X, the Y rather. That was confusing. On the Y. To create that familiar sort of bulb shape thing. So, a couple of things left to do. Fill in the outside of it. See what I mean? Which is not working. And we are not filling because you can tell me why. I don't know. No, I had five selected by accident, to be honest. So that's the end done. And of course, the bottom of these things, because it is a bulb, is perfectly straight. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to pull that up there. And in fact, just to highlight this so that. If I do texture it properly, I will keep, give it a flat shading there, just to highlight the fact that it's supposed to be flat. And that'll do. That's the uh, street lamp model done. Now I'm just going to give this a base material. I'm going to call it uh, street lamp mat. 
turn down the specular to zero. That's all we need to do here, I think, really. And I'm going to start texturing it. So I'm going to create a new texture. Uh, street lamp text. It's going to be an image on movie. There we go. I've got. I've just opened a new texture for it. This is a sort of metal, a braised metal or something. Um, I got it off CG, cgtextures.com. Yes, Andrew Price is not the only blended tutorial maker who uses it. No surprises there. Okay, uh, size. Well, we can have a look at this first of all in textured view, hopefully. If I make sure this is signed properly. And, oh, before we go continue, check, go to the Blender game for the uh, render engine and go down to render settings and set it to G GLSL here. So now we can actually see in the viewport our textures and it's basically just a much better shader. If you're wondering what stereo is, it, this is for stereoscopic something. Uh, Ah, name escapes me, but it's basically for 3D. It's for the old sort of 3D style thing. So if I press play here, we can see we've got the red and the blue, which is really cool. So go, go back to the texture. We get, this time we can change the size, um, maybe three actually. I'm gonna make it the texture larger so that it actually appears smaller on the model. And to update that, just tab in and out of edit mode. That looks okay to me. Uh, yeah, just about. Okay, I'm, now we've set up the texturing. Excuse me for the um, street lamp. So now what we need to do is to sort out the lighting for it. At the moment, lighting doesn't really seem to work with Blender groups, and we're going to be using groups um, for our objects when we're actually going to create the game. So the lighting we can't actually. Oops, we, lighting we can't actually make part of the group. So I'm going to give you an alternative, but to start off with, we're going to just add a spot lamp, and of course I'll need to add a ground plane as well. Love GLSL, um, just so that we can see what we're doing. I'll put the clip start to zero, and I'm going to turn the energy down to maybe 0.2. Yep. Now. It's a bit weird having a street lamp where there's no light actually coming from the top of it at all. So we're just going to add a point lamp. I'm going to put it to the top, and I like to have the two lined up perfectly. So snap the cursor selected, and do the other way around. Snap selection to cursor. So now the two are lined up perfectly. Okay. And I think I'm going to turn the energy down to 0.3 or just something low. Or maybe not, I don't know. One. Oh, yeah, th oh, that's why. Sorry. Yeah, I do need. It should be about 0.3, I guess. Something nice and low. Because. This is pretty much completely black because it doesn't have a. T it doesn't have texture yet. So I'm just going to assign it something default. Uh, not be three is obviously a bit too bright. That's a bit better. There we go. Save. So we need an alternative to the whole grouping thing, because obviously the lights aren't going to work. My idea is we're just going to add a placeholder to show where the light should be put, and then when we actually put it into the game, we can then duplicate it once we've added the lights. Not a problem. So I'm going to add a circle, I'm just going to give it 8 vertices. I'm going to pop it down there. Make sure it's aligned perfectly with the two lamps at the top here. So put it down to about there. Scale it up. And the scale is going to show us, when we actually go come to create the game, the scale is going to show us where the actual bounds of the light. So that looks about right. Vertex my selection mode. So, before we extrude these to show where the actual lamp should be situated, I'm going to suggest changing the pivot point to the 3D cursor. You can do that, or you can press the period key. 
Now I'm going to hit extrude and scale it to zero, and that's going to put them all up there. And then I'm just going to merge them at the center. So we've now got this sort of bounds object, which is going to show us, which is going to show us where to put the lamps and where the, the bounds of the actual light. I should stop doing that. Okay. So we've got our lamp all set up and ready to be used. It's textured and everything. There isn't. A, I haven't put a texture in for the top there, but um, you can always add a, just a, another object on top. Should I do it? All right. I'll, I'll put something in. Just a makeshift light. Another thing about GLSL is how it well it integrates with Blender. So I'm going to put this in and it's going to... I like to rotate it, obviously. Why? Like that. Yeah, don't forget to change the pivot point back again. Okay, and this is just going to be a plane. I'm going to grab everything, extrude it on Z just to make sure it's going to be rendered properly. And I'm going to give it a new material. This is going to be called light mat. It doesn't need a texture. Just going to make it white. I'm going to make it shadeless. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go back to texture view. And so we've got our light here shining down on there. Perfect. Alright, so that's our light. That's our street lamp. Now I'm going to move on to the second scene. 